That's right, Brianna. It's been going on for years, and a court has ruled against some American Airlines workers at Newark Airport who claim they've been shorted on overtime pay. The federal appeals court decided those workers cannot file a class action lawsuit against the airline, saying the claim should be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. That decision reversed a New Jersey judge's ruling that allowed the suit to go forward. Hourly workers filed this lawsuit back in 2016, seeking back pay and punitive damages. American has denied the allegations. Following this recent ruling, the workers' attorney says they are are considering their options. Amazon continues to generate jobs in New Jersey. A new Amazon distribution center that is set to open in Somerset County next year is expected to create more than 1,000 jobs. That's according to officials in Franklin Township. This new warehouse will be the 11th Amazon fulfillment center in the state. Meantime, Amazon claims the holiday shopping season broke all of its prior records. The company didn't go into many specifics, but said billions of items were ordered worldwide. Online shopping continues to capture a greater amount of overall retail spending. Online retail sales jumped nearly 19 percent this season compared to last, according to a survey by MasterCard Spending Pulse. A New Jersey bank did some shopping this week, finding a competitor to purchase. Northfield Bank, based in Woodbridge, is acquiring Victory State Bank. This deal expands its competitive position in the Staten Island marketplace. In the past two years, there have been nearly two dozen bank mergers in New Jersey, according to the state banking department. This year, the Food and Drug Administration approved more than 40 new drugs to treat everything from migraines to cancer. And a lot of the drugs were developed right here in New Jersey. Recently, I sat down with Debbie Hart, the president and CEO of BioNJ, to talk about the impact of the biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry on the state. So right now, the industry represents about 120,000 jobs, about $47.5 billion in economic activity. We are looking at, as we're closing out 2019, we're looking at New Jersey companies representing about 50% of all novel FDA drug approvals in 2019. So we're pretty excited about that. Each and every year, we've gotten more and more smaller companies that are represented in those numbers. So that's an exciting development. And smaller companies want to be in New Jersey, which is interesting as well. Tell me a little bit about what you saw this year in terms of interest. They do want to be in New Jersey, and partly because they want to be near Big Pharma. They also want to be able to attract those talented people that Big Pharma has trained um, so diligently over the years. And that number, you know, the number of companies, the number of drug approvals, um, the, the level of activity has increased each and every year from the year before it. I think some residents might not realize um, that there are companies here big ones we might know of, but some of these smaller companies with these drug approvals, they're really changing patients' lives. They really are, and the science has never been more exciting or better or more meaningful for patients. Um, in the area of gene, cell and gene therapy in particular, there have been a couple of approvals over the last couple of years coming from New Jersey companies. And um, that, and in, in many cases, in, the, in, in, uh, in those situations with, with that kind of therapy, it's first of all never been done before. Um, it, it, in many cases, it does and will mean uh, a one-time administration and a, a cure as opposed to a therapy. So cell and gene manufacturing is, is huge in New Jersey. The research is huge in New Jersey, will continue to grow, and again, is providing a, just a tremendous amount of hope for patients. Are you getting, for this industry, all the support that's needed to continue the growth? There are some speed bumps, whether it's Washington or policies, and there's been a focus on lowering drug prices, for instance. Is that going to be a big hurdle for some companies? Well, it remains to be seen, and I think it, you know if it's a hurdle for one, it will likely be a hurdle for all. Um, we are concerned about some of the proposals that are coming out of Washington, in particular, su in particular, such as importation and international pricing. And while the uh, the goal is an excellent one, right, to reduce the price that patients pay, um, reduce drug costs, what I'm really concerned about is that what will actually be caught, cut will be innovation um, and also patient access to the drugs that they need. And what really needs to happen is we need to focus on the price that the patient is paying at the pharmacy counter. If we focus there and then look back up the chain and look at where
where all the pricing, uh, the costs are coming from, and take a comprehensive approach, I think that's really the way to go. Again, focusing at what the, the patient pays at the pharmacy counter will make all the difference. And we think that all the players need to come to the table and talk about that. And BioNJ is more than um, uh, interested in being at that table to have that discussion. It's an important one. Are there positive developments that you're looking at that will spur this industry even further next year? So we're hopeful that uh, you know the FDA has been a partner to the industry more than ever, I think, over the last couple of years. And we're hopeful that that will continue and some of the regulatory hurdles um, will be uh, will be minimized and shortened and you know time to market will be improved. That could be um, a very significant and promising and important outcome. And I have to ask, because it does come up, what about ensuring patient safety along the way, because that's the one issue people raise when, when you hear approvals are being sped up, they're like, wait a minute, what does that mean? Well, I think that you know the clinical trial process ensures as much as humanly possible, right, uh, patient safety. Um, our concern with patient safety is more when you're looking at some of the proposals that we talked about, importation and international pricing. Um, with that, we're more concerned is where you know patient sa safety could be compromised. Do you see consolidation in the industry next year? We've seen some very big drug players join forces. Does consolidation continue? So the industry is is such that that is sort of the way it evolves and grows. And so while, you know, it's sometimes oh my goodness, a, a company is being acquired or, you know, um, or is going away. Um, that is part of the churn. And while, again, it, we're, from where I sit, it's difficult to watch. But as, as one great example in New Jersey, the bringing together of BMS and Celgene in 2019, the hope and the promise that that means for the economy and for patients is really just extraordinary. You took two really strong, solid companies who have very rich pipelines and now they have efficiencies, um, and they will be able to uh, to hopefully bring those th those therapies and cures together further, faster. Debbie Hart, so good to talk to you again. Thank you, Rhonda. My pleasure.